Bulletin Board in the Municipal Building in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, HASA 10, semicolon 4 6. Please rise for a salute to the flag. The flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Attended a 
seminar uh, this past Saturday down in the Sea Caucus. It took us two hours to get there, but it was worthwhile to hear the compliments that we were getting about our budget, about our negotiations with the police department, with the Department of Public Works, etc. We recognize different historical sites at the Historical Preservation Commission. We sent letters now supporting the Veterans Cemetery for Sussex County. We passed ordinances to fund, repair, and purchase necessary fire equipment. by the Council of Ordinance for the Purchase, Operating of Sewerage Facilities, and Recapturing Past Expenses for the Sewerage. Liaison meetings have been held with the Board of Education to explore further possibilities of shared revenues, weather forecasts, care of the athletic fields, supplies, any other things that we can do to share the services to cut down costs. The mayor has finalized now and concluded lease negotiations for the, historic, I mean, uh, the Vernon Historical Society to use uh, uh, the special services buildings. So the Historical Society now has their own building. Now I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Rizzuto. We'll take a look at businesses and what businesses have given back. Thank you, Dick. What Dick has shared with you are actions of the mayor and council uh, in our last 100 days and how they affected the community regarding many fiscal situations, the operating situations. And you know, we are part of a, we all live in this community and there are many people who contribute to this community. And we ask for their help in a number of different ways. Uh, certainly the sponsorship of many of the activities of our youth. And these are some of the businesses, these are the businesses who have given back to Vernon. Mag and Lindy's, Pochuck Valley Farms, Heaven Hill Farms, Pochuck Valley Farm Market and Deli, Duncan Donuts. Uh, you know, these people give not only financial assistance, they also give assistance in kind. I don't think we could do without the donuts that Dunkin' Donuts supply to so many of the activities. And certainly Valley National Bank and Sussex Bank and their support and their sponsorship. <coughs> Regrettably, I don't think they give samples of their wares, but you never know. Uh, of course, we have the gifts from our schools. You know, we have a very active school system and the youngsters and the faculty who uh, work in that school system are so kind to be able to come and present uh, what they can do at many of the activities. We have our Lounsbury Hollow School Choir, the Vernon High School Brass Choir, the Glen Meadow uh, Pier, and uh, Mrs. Belli for her help in uh, directing that organization, the Vernon High School Meister Singers, and of course the Vernon Township Board of Education. Uh, you know, they've been very helpful in uh, providing assistance for parking and uh, facility usage. Uh, of course, we can't forget the people in our own community, uh, in, our, in our township uh, organization. We have our township fire department. Uh, they are fantastically helpful in doing many things uh, in support of the children and in support of local activities. The Vernon Township EPW for their help in, in decorating uh, the tree at the uh, center of town and setting up the lighting. We also have help from the Vernon PAL uh, to uh, decorating the tree and in the lighting ceremony. Of course, we have our community choir society for their rendition and the Vernon police for keeping us safe that very, very sloppy night. Uh, and we have the uh, Vernon Township Chamber of Commerce uh, and their help that they've given all of the uh, community organizations. 
and the help that we draw from them. And of course, you know, we the community also has some fun. Uh, during the uh, Halloween season, we had the Board of Recreation's Halloween events. Uh, this was put on by members of our uh, Recreation Commission. And uh, we had our senior citizens Halloween party, and they were costumes, and they had some refreshments, and they also had a lot of fun. And of course, we moved on to our holiday events. Here's a very beautiful picture that we received from the AIM uh, publications, and it shows the tree and the background in the, uh, the park, fire department uh, area where trucks are kept out. The trucks were pulled out, and youngsters were able to go inside, and they were provided refreshments and entertainment with the choirs, because if you remember, it was a very snowy, messy night. And uh, this was sponsored by our Department of Community Affairs, and again, our Recreation Commission, for the Christmas tree lighting, and we want to give special thanks to the Snook family for the, the contribution of the tree for this uh, wonderful event. And these are some of the activities that also took place during the holiday. We had singers in the fire department during that evening. Uh, we had a holiday dinner, uh, uh, luncheon rather, for our senior citizens, and some events for the youngsters uh, during the uh, tree lighting ceremony. And of course we had a party for our senior citizens. Here we see our mayor, uh, who was, uh, well, you know, mayor of three ballpark, part of the senior citizen group. So. <laughs> we were there with him in spirit as well. Yeah. And here are some of the dances that were going on, and we see some of the people who are uh, involved. And of course we bring our children in to work with the senior citizens. They are so welcome, and as you can see they have a great time. This is just a few of the things that we did during the last hundred days.
And since when do part-time personnel get health and retirement benefits? It was deceptive to state that the mayor would receive $30,000 as, as part-time pay without the town council saying <coughs> that the mayor would be getting benefits, an additional ballpark amount of between $15,000 and $20,000 a year. It was deceptive for the mayor to campaign for a part-time job when lobbying to keep Jerry Jones as business administrator to do less work but be paid a handsome $100,000, all better reduction, of $18,000 in salary. The mayor deceived people into believing he would be a part-time mayor and would be paid as such. So now, just seven months after being elected, with the proposed raise of the mayor's salary to $50,000, plus again between $15,000 and $20,000 of benefits, and the business administrator, Jerry Jones, his proposed salary of $115,000 and approximately $15,000 to $20,000 in benefits, we, the Vernon taxpayer, would be paying approximately $200,000 for the two of them doing the same job as the town manager did for $125,000 a year an increase of approximately $75,000. If the mayor is working 80 hours a week, then either the business administrator is not doing his job and should be fired, or the mayor should resign because he is in over his head and doesn't know how or cannot make timely decisions. It was deceptive for you to state that Vernon Township would save $50,000 a year when you fire two local part-time fire inspectors, Vernon residents, making $26.41 per hour with no benefits. Under the guise that you were saving the township money, in less than a month, the mayor hired one full-time employee at $59,000 with benefits and a town truck that he could commute to his home in Hackettstown. By the way, there is no precedent for this. This full-time fire official is in the proposed salary ordinance for an increase of up to $70,000. Additionally, a new part-timer has been hired. It appears that the good practice of hiring from within is not being followed. Additionally, it also appears that civil service rules are being ignored. Our former part-time has never cost the town more than $58,000 per year. We went from $58,000 a year to approximately $85,000 for the same service, and that doesn't include the cost of the truck, gas, insurance, etc., for a hacked town commute. In conclusion, this mayor and town council have deceived the Vernon taxpayer. I believe the idea that you can increase expenses without it costing us the taxpayer is, in the words of President Ronald Reagan, it's called voodoo economics. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? President, members of the council, my name is Howard Wooden. I've been a resident of the town since 1975, and I am here to speak in opposition to the Ordinance 12-01 as it relates to salary increases for the mayor and council. I apologize, I've got a cold, but I want to come today. Uh, the only person who really was coming was my wife. Um, and the only reason I decided to come was because I read in the paper that when this was initially raised, uh, I don't think there's anybody who's spoken in opposition to it, so I had to put my two cents in. I have the privilege of knowing several members of this council for a long time, including the mayor. I have a great deal of respect for each of you and fully appreciate the importance of the job you are doing and the amount of time it takes away from your families and private lives. That being said, why then am I speaking in opposition? This township, like almost every municipality in the state of New Jersey, has two governing bodies. The town council provides governance for the town, the Board of Education oversees the education of our children. Mr. Rizzuto, better than anyone else on the council, can tell you can tell you that for all the years that he served honorably on a Board of Education, he never received a salary for his services. I truly believe he served all those years because he loved being in a position to help guide the growth and development of our school district, and he must be commended for the outstanding job he did. I think you would agree with me that our colleagues on the Board of Education also spend a great deal of time in meetings, discussions, and various preparations and visitations related to their positions, time that also takes them away from their families and their private lives. They also deal with an operating budget of over $70 million, more than four times the size of the Council's budget. A salary increase of $2,000 for Council members 
3,000 in the case of the council president is a drop in the bucket in the overall scheme of things. You're not going to support a family on that amount or even take a grand tour of Europe. Some might call this a pilling amount, but to many of our fair fellow citizens, this might be a windfall from heaven, making the difference between surviving and losing everything. Economically, we are still living in very hard times. All one has to do is to look at all the empty and foreclosed homes around the town to know that. But it's deeper than that. How many of our fellow citizens are truly struggling to make their mortgage payments, to pay their bills, to put food on the table? I might be wrong, but I seem to recall one member among you, when first considering a run for office, said he was even thinking of taking no salary. You are the first council members of our new form of government, one which I supported and still do. Many people are watching to see how you do, and for me, it is important you succeed. For others, they question, is this truly new government, or is it politics as usual? Some people believe public service is its own reward, and this must be true for all the members who have served on a board of education. For the time being, I ask you to consider taking no salary at all. But at the very least, I urge you to take no salary increase while fellow residents are still struggling in this current economy. Thank you very much.
The township doesn't need nor is ready for a full-time mayor. I have good reason for saying that. Good management says to go into the situation, assessing it and its people first, and then make decisions from there. Can I do it as a part-time mayor? Absolutely, he stated. I know how to do it, and I know how to do it well, Murata. Later told the Revere Review. I am the only candidate for mayor with the management skills, budget skills, budget experience, government experience, corporate experience, and problem-solving skills to serve the community. This statement was also published in all of the Sussex County papers. I am opposed to any salary increase for the mayor or any other municipal worker now, because at this point in time, which has been reported consistently as the worst economic times in decades, the worst economic times since the Great Depression, these requests are unconscionable in my estimation. Residents have lost their jobs, we're struggling to live on unemployment benefits, we're being furloughed, taking salary decreases, paying more for our health care benefits, all this is why the day-to-day -day cost for every commodity continues to rise and the rank and file struggle financially. The mayor made a campaign promise to work part-time and that he was the only candidate who could do so. Was he just telling people that as part of his campaign rhetoric? In any event, the mayor was adamant about keeping his campaign promise regarding changing the date of the municipal elections from May to November. He should also keep his campaign promise for this issue. He needs to be accountable for his words. And I am also against any salary increase for the town council or any other municipal worker. Just a reminder that a salary freeze is on for all state legislators and that in many towns, the councils, the mayors are not taking any salary due to financial hardships. We also had a hiring freeze for low days established here in Vernon. What happened to those? I am asking that a no vote be made on ordinance number 1201. We are counting on you, the Vernon Town Council, on behalf of all Vernon taxpayers to make the better choice as representatives. This salary guide to me is nothing more than a runaway, a runaway freight train. We changed our form of government to have a better, better municipal leadership that would benefit all of us. Vernon voters should hold their elected officials' feet to the fire for the election promises that they made to them. Whatever happened to the slogan, Vernon first? During the last council meeting, you heard the voices of the Appalachian condo <coughs> unit owners. You heard them loud and clear. Now I ask that you hear us, the voices of concerned Vernon residents, the taxpayers. The majority of our voices sound the same, although our faces and circumstances may be different. While we all came to Vernon Township to live the American dream, we all seem to be struggling to make ends meet in today's economy. Times are tough. We all do without just to get by. That is not why now is that is why now is not the time. Now, today, when Vernon residents are struggling even more to survive, now is just not the time to raise the mayor's salary by 67%. It is baffling to me that we are even here tonight having to discuss this as an issue. It should not be an issue. The people of Vernon are facing harsh economic times. Food banks are bare. People are losing their jobs, their homes. Businesses are closing and moving out of town. Now there's rumor that a school may be closing due to the lack of enrollment. Doctors, reputable doctors that have been here for years, are moving back to Warwick to survive. Figures do not add up. Why then should this be the time to give the mayor many others raises? The mayor is the one who, during his campaign, stated he would do the job as mayor for $500 a week. And now, when things seem to be getting worse economically for the good people of Vernon, the select few deserve raises after only six to seven months. Where do our priorities lie? Please, please.
please look at our faces and for those we represent who cannot be here tonight. And please hear our voices loud and clear. No races. Now is not the time. Please do what is right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, we, my husband and I, are here to support Ordinance 12-01. In 1989, year after my husband and I purchased our first home, we have found out that our property was contaminated with high levels of lead and mercury. It was an example of Big Marotta's fight to keep Vernon clean that motivated us and 249 other homeowners from Phantom Lake to take action and fight the state and chemical giant DuPont. After nine years of legal battle, we have won and moved here to Vernon. This is our home, and we are here to stay. How do we know Mayor Barossa and this council? For 15 years, without results, Lake communities asked for help from Vernon Township in form of salt purchase at lower rates. It was Dick Marotta and this council that made it happen. The contract with the Lakes communities for salt storage and a new, more efficient snow plowing route will lead to savings in labor, equipment, usage, and insurance. The savings from this project will occur in every year to come, and they will benefit to the town and the lake. Damage from Hurricane Irene and floods were the test that our mayor and the council passed 110%. When the mayor visited one part of Vernon, the councilmen were assessing damage in different parts. Work was done in timely and safe manner with costs under strict consideration. After flooding came flood of mosquitoes. I personally asked for the mayor's intervention. The off-road spray was implemented immediately to protect health of all residents with a special consideration for children awaiting transportation to school. Our mayor contracted the County Freeholders and requested their cooperation in aerial space to contain growth of mosquito larvae <coughs> in the swamp and prevent an outbreak of mosquito infestation in the fall of 2011 and spring 2012. <coughs> and last but not least, our Vernon is entering 20th century. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 20th, not 21st year. We will have a sewer system operating in the town center decades after dragging and delaying. That will allow for responsible, environmentally safe, and plant economic growth of this township. Times are hard. So let's do good things. Let's make it better. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, all of this and only in six very busy months. Thank you. I ask you to support and vote yes for this <coughs> ordinance. 
Vernon is a full-time community and it needs full-time administration. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak? I um <coughs> Diane works for Barry Lake. I don't have a prepared speech, I didn't really expect to get up here. But as I recall when we were running, the statements <coughs> were made if it was feasible that he would be a part-time mayor, and we wouldn't know until we took office what was going to happen, because we had no idea what was going on. So whatever decisions that were made for him to be a full-time mayor were made, and we need a full-time mayor, and I have no objection to paying someone what the job is worth. So I support that part of the bill. But you guys, I have a problem with you giving yourself raise. If I were to walk in and say to my boss, I'm giving myself a raise to change the payroll, I can never get what. So basically, I know that you know you all make the decision for Mr. Mayor, but from my point of view, if you think the council needs more money, you can let the next council get the raise that you're Anyone else like to speak? There's a motion to close the public comment. The motion made by Rizzuto, second by Mr. Wetzel. All in favor by affirmation? Aye. Okay, uh, Mayor's report. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the first order that I'd like to uh, begin my report with is an introduction that, uh, that pleases me in, in uh, a great way. Many of you know the gentleman that I'm about to introduce to this council. He has served this community as a committeeman. He has served our county as a freeholder. He indeed has served our state in the Department of Labor and has recently received his Ph.D and uh, it happens to be one of Vernon's treasure trove in my mind. So I'd like to introduce to the council and, and uh, see a few moments of my report this evening to Mr. Howard Burrell, who will speak to us this evening about the American Red Cross Heroes Program. So if I may, Howard, please. Thank you, Mr. Burrell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for that very warm arm. Introduction. Uh, I am Howard Burrell, a Sussex County and a Vernon Township resident. I have come before you this evening as the 2012 chairperson of the Sussex County and Warren County chapters, Hero for the American Red Cross. <clears throat> I will be brief, Mr. Mayor, but let me first thank you for giving me this time on your meeting agenda. You now, having served two terms on this very council, uh, I know that your plate's full, and I know that your time is very precious. So that has given me even a greater appreciation for the fact that you've so graciously given me some of your time. As I was sitting there thinking about the fact that I'm going to have to come before this group and ask people to give contributions, uh, you know, at a time when individuals have been highlighting how difficult things are, and things are very difficult, I wondered if I should really just skip the presentation. But I think it's important that I come before you and talk about the American Red Cross because the American Red Cross is one organization that helps a lot of these individuals when they're in very difficult times. And I, I thought about what the late Dr. Martin Luther King said. He said that there is never a wrong time to do the right thing. And to ask for support for the American Red Cross is the right thing. <coughs> so I am here tonight reaching out to you for help in raising funds to support the vital programs and services that the Red Cross provides to residents of Sussex County. Services that the Red Cross provides to your families in need, to your friends when they're in need, and to your neighbors when they're in need. And equally important is the fact that the Red Cross provides these services 
24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. You know, the American Red Cross is the only humanitarian organization with a congressional charter to provide relief to victims of disasters and to help people prevent, to help people prepare for and respond to emergencies. However, what most people don't know is that the Red Cross is not government funded. That is, the Red Cross does not receive one penny from our federal government, from any state government, from any county government, or any municipal government. The Red Cross relies 100% on the support of the people who live in the states, who live in the counties, and who live in the towns and cities that they serve. The Sussex County chapter of the American Red Cross has the accountability for service in an area that covers more than 151,000 lives that live in the 24 municipalities of our great county. Because of the wide scope of services provided by the Red Cross, and I speak of services such as life-saving and life confident services that support to those faced with the disastrous results of events such as massive snowstorms, massive flooding, hurricanes, tornadoes, problems with storms and earthquakes, services such as providing life-saving blood when needed, providing temporary disaster support services such as shelter, food, clothing, and prescription drugs, providing life-saving preparedness training such as first aid, CPR, responsible babysitting, and water safety, and the equally important service of providing critical emergency support to armed forces families. Because of the wide scope of these services, it is all but certain that the Red Cross will either directly or indirectly touch the life of every single person in some way during their lifetime. And when you give one of your hard-earned dollars to the American Red Cross, you can rest assured that almost 100% of that dollar will go directly to providing services to those in need and not to administrative expenses. For example, the American Red Cross has received an A-plus rating from the American Institute of Philanthropy for its proven ability to get quick relief to disaster victims while using every dollar widely. In addition, the Red Cross also has the highest rating possible with the organization called Charity Navigator, which confirms that 91 cents of every dollar received by the American Red Cross goes directly to providing services to those in need. The hero for the American Red Cross is a major fundraising event for the Suffolk County chapter. The hero for the American Red Cross concept is very simple. Individuals, groups, or organizations are asked to become a hero for the American Red Cross. An individual, group, or organization becomes a hero for the American Red Cross by agreeing to raise at least $1,000 for the American Red Cross during the campaign period which will end March the 31st of this year. While individuals, groups, and organizations can start raising their thousand dollars immediately, the Heroes Campaign will officially run for a three-week period beginning March the 2nd, and it will end March the 23rd. The funds can be raised in a variety of ways. For example, individuals who may work alone or may choose to involve their company, their civic club, or their school in fundraising efforts. Or an individual or business may choose to simply donate the funds needed to become a hero. And just why did the Red Cross choose $1,000 as the amount of funds that's required to become a hero? It's because $1,000, with $1,000, the Sussex County Red Cross can provide food and groceries for one week for up to 10 families of three. This means an awful lot of families with young children who have, all, who have lost almost everything because of a house fire or because of flooding or because of some other disaster. The Sussex County Red Cross can provide 476 comfort kits containing toiletries and disasters to disaster victims who have lost their home, and they did this at the sheriff's office of Sussex State. The Sussex County Red Cross can provide 28 sleeping cots or 198 blankets for disaster victims who must sleep in shelters. The Sussex County Red Cross can provide 8,800 are you ready for winter storm or hurricane brochures for distribution to local residents as a way of educating the individuals in our county as to the actions that they need to take in order to properly prepare for winter storm or hurricane. Or the Suffolk County Red Cross can provide
shoes for 50 disaster victims of clothing for nine individuals with $1,000. A hero's campaign kickoff breakfast will mark the official start of the campaign on March the 7th. This breakfast will be held at 9 a.m. at the Hampton Diner, which is located on Route 206 north of Newton. On the day of the Heroes campaign kickoff breakfast, the New Jersey Herald newspaper will donate a full-page color ad featuring the photos and the logos of those individuals or businesses who have committed to become heroes. The New Jersey Herald will run the same full-page color ad three times during the month of the campaign. The campaign will conclude with a hero celebration luncheon on March the 30th. And by the way, I'm still trying to locate a place for that luncheon, and I'd sure like for it to be somewhere here in Vernon Township. I'm just about finished, Mr. Mayor. As a resident of Vernon Township, it would make me awfully proud if I could get the county's largest school district, the Vernon Township School District, and the largest municipality in the county, Vernon Township, to commit to this year becoming heroes for the Sussex County American Red Cross. I'm pleased to report that at Thursday's Board of Education meeting, I received a commitment from the superintendent and the Board of Education that the schools in Vernon Township will support the Red Cross this year by becoming 20,000 heroes. I'm also pleased to report that when I discussed the Heroes campaign with the Honorable Mayor Victor Morata and one of our town's outstanding citizens who was actually a candidate for this council, Mr. Joe Tadman, they both, on the spot, committed to supporting the efforts of the Red Cross by becoming heroes. Now my request to you, Mr. Council Persons, tonight is that if you would also join as heroes. Now, I understand that, and I'm not trying to publicly put anybody on the spot, I understand that these times are difficult. If you could find it somehow to raise the funds to become heroes, I would be extremely proud. And if you could not, what I've, what I've left here, and in your packages that I've given you, I've got sheets, and by the way, I've got some of these that the public can use. So if you'd like to contribute to the Red Cross in any amount, uh, this one will tell you where to write, who to write the check out to, where to actually send the check. It will be very helpful for us. You know, I'm pretty aggressive, and I, I plan, this is the fourth year of this campaign, and I plan for this to be the largest campaign ever in this county, and I think that we can do it, and I think that Vernon Township can help. Mr. Mayor, I thank you for your generosity and council people that I ask for you and all of the public, if you could help us out, do so, because that money will come back to you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Howard. The next item in my report includes the appointment of uh, our fire police, and if I may, I'd like to uh, inform the council that the following members of various Vernon Township fire departments have successfully attended the required training in the field of fire police and are in need of their yearly appointment by the mayor and the common council. So if I may, I, uh, I'd like to uh, place the following names in nomination for your consideration, gentlemen. John Alberger, John Barcelona, Leighton Bergman, Bud Brech, Ed Barukian, Chris, Chris Christensen, Ken Clark, Kelly Courtright, Herb Courtright, Charlie Dalrymple, Chris Jensen, Kyle Kapusta, Richard Malewski, David Mulder, Alan Nagel, Kenny Petranko, John Rockwell, Brian Rivers, Tina Sanchez, Trent Shamble, Jim Sheridan, Art Sinfeld, Frank Van Lenten, and Lance Wesley. These people serve a very important purpose in the event of fires, as I'm sure you all know, and I would appreciate it if the council would see fit to, in fact, uh, approve their nomination. Can I have a motion? I have a motion. Motion made by council member is done. I'll second the motion. Second by council member Rizzuto. Please call the roll. Council member Dunn. Yes. Council member Kadish. I don't know whether I should recruit myself to have so many of those names that are friends of mine. <laughs> if you do, they're going to find you. <laughs> yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Wessel? Yes. Council President Lynn? I abstain. They're going to find you. They know where to get you. They know where you are. <laughs> uh, the third item on my list actually uh, was a little addition to all of you.
members and all of the minutes and agendas. There's an online library of downloadable forms, most of which may be filled out on the computer and saved to the user's hard drive. There's an easy access list to upcoming meetings in addition to news stories regarding um, things that are happening within the township. There will be a greater emphasis on disseminating and archiving news and information. Um, there's many highlights, but I think perhaps one of the biggest improvements is the conversion of the various meeting minutes from the old PDF format to HTML. Um, for those of you who may not quite understand that terminology, that simply means that the Township Council minutes, as well as all the other boards and committees, are now just as accessible and searchable on the website as everything else. By way of example, on the last website, maybe you were searching for something, you know, with, that you knew was contained within an agenda or within a set of minutes, but you couldn't find that in the search engine because it was embedded into a PDF. The new website has those in the HTML, so now you'll be able to search on the basic search engine and anything that will come up that was in any meeting minutes or agendas. And there's ways to, stream, ways to streamline, streamline that as well. You know, when the mayor took office in July, he had spoke up here and he had said that he was frustrated by the website and its navigation, um, cited his own frustrations with the site and the administration and the administration of the site that he inherited. What you're about to see was a lot of months of work. Uh, I would have loved to have been up here you know, two months ago doing this, but as you can imagine, when you're doing something this interactive and this extensive, it takes a lot of time. And I was not going to come up here with a quote-unquote work in progress. I wanted to come up here with what is essentially a final product. Um, in addition, after I go over the municipal website, I'm going to give you a brief look at what the MUA website looks like as well. Um, as you may recall, part of the proposal that was given to us was to include an MUA website, which is required by law and was required by the approval given to us by the local finance board and train when the MUA was established. Uh, this, is, this is the main page of the new website. Um, what you see here is a picture of the boardwalk and the Appalachian Trail. What we are going to be doing, as you'll see, is in the next, every couple of weeks we're going to be updating this picture to one of the treasures that we have in town. If you're a new resident in Vernon, one of the first things you want to know is what's going on in Vernon. We have an About Vernon website that has various things, the overview, the demographics, various maps, clubs, recycling information, and trail information. For example, when you click on the demographics, you're going to get the most recent updates of the, of the census in a very easily readable format. Um, this took a lot of time and effort, and I credit our webmaster who was Bobby the Web at Morristown, New Jersey. Things like the Vernon Area Shuttle, we took a lot of time to show the shuttle, show the map, the various maps, the local routes, and if you click here, you would see a very detailed schedule. And again, one of the highlights of this website is that we didn't just take a document that was given to us, you know, in a flyer, in a PDF format, and throw it on the website. You know, it makes it hard to read, it makes it hard to search. This is a lot you know, more easy to see for the public. I think one of the most popular parts of the website, most likely, is the council meetings. I mean, it's an agenda as people want to know what's going on in the community. If you go to the council website and the about site, no, sorry, excuse me, there it is. You'll see a list of the council people. That's your link to your email address, and there's the bios. If you haven't had a chance to get me a bio, please do so um, as soon as possible. With respect to minutes. You would go to the meeting section of the Township Council website. And this is where I kind of want to show you the search function that was the major improvement of the website. What you'll have here is the most recent agenda in minutes. Obviously, we're approving a lot of minutes tonight, and by tomorrow afternoon, all of those will be on the website. And you assuming you're approving tonight. Now, in one of the last meetings, we approved a contract. It was a no-cost contract by virtue of the payroll services with Action Data Services. And you know, in the old website, you might go in and search. You might say, you know what, we did something with Action Data Services, and I want to remember what it was. So you would search that, and it wouldn't come up because it was with the contained within a PDF. And as I said before, what you're going to see here, just by searching that in, you'll see it in the minutes. And now the minutes are contained on the website like this and you would search through and obviously find that. And no longer are you searching through a PDF hoping the user's computer, the public's computer, can accommodate that format. And anything you search for. Now, if you're also going to do a search, 
you can exclude minutes because a lot of times a word might come up in the minutes, you know, 50 times. So you can exclude minutes when you're doing that. Our uh, Department of Community and Development and Recreation and Senior Services obviously has a large role on this website simply by virtue of the people that we serve. For the new residents or people looking for new things going on in the town, you would go to our parks and facilities page. We list all of our parks. Some of the parks maybe we don't own that are located in Vernon or maybe within the county that we think would be of interest. Give detailed descriptions of each park and put a picture of each park. We have a very active senior services center. We talked briefly about our senior center. We put all the regular activities. The mayor tells me I have a tendency to move too fast when I'm doing these. Uh, of course, as the council president, so I'm trying to go slower. We're trying to move. I'm going to wait till I get home and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> the nutrition program um, every month lists the entire menu that's going on downstairs. I know there's been some talk about recycling in the past. How you know because of the new recycling for the take over the recycling center and the things that are going on without the community, we want people to know, you know, what they can do. This is a, our hours of our recycling center, all the things that we accept, and, you know, a note that there are clothing donation bins, you know, on the recycling center by the Vietnam Vets of America and the AM Vets. Our police department and our public safety, our fire, ambulance, and emergency squads. We briefly touched on our various fire departments. We list all of our chiefs and our contact information. Our police department lists our organization and the names of all of our police officers within the community. There's a message from Chief Roy Weary. There he is. And an internal affairs complaint form. Unfortunately, hopefully these never have to be used, but in the event of public does feel the need to use it. It's easily accessible, easily fillable, and can be easily transmitted to the chief of police in both English and Spanish. You would save it to your hard drive, printed 
it out or email them to the clip zone. Which is better too? I'm trying to get the domain stuff pointed to little hiccup that I have that, but now most of these tabs going across the top. You know, you don't have to click on it, it'll just, you know, scroll over it and get to everything you need. If you happen to click on it, it'll just simply bring you to the same stuff and add a few more tabs that you might be able to look on look at. And the police Facebook page is gonna be on every stage of the website, as you'll see here on the bottom left hand side. So I'm not, I mean, I obviously am not going to go through every single page of the website, but I wanted to give you the highlights. Uh, and one more page, I'll just go on the land use board so you see how some of the boards and committees are structured. Talks about the boards, what they do, has all their meetings, and all the agendas and all the minutes. Archived from 2010, 2011, and all the PDFs. So that's the Burn Township Municipal website. It will be the same URL address. Is there a way to look up ordinances on there? Yes, um, all the ordinances are on here. How far back does this go historically? As far as ordinances, internal uh, SOPs uh, as regards to uh, employees? Uh, ordinances go back at least to 2010, the current ones. Anything in the coded system goes back into what our code is on our municipal code website. So, you know, as far back as any ordinance we've ever had. But as far as the text of ordinances, it's three years. And on the codes and documents, you would see links to our annual budget. This is actually something I wanted to show. This goes back four years. The state has come up with the, you know, certain best practices on what needs to be on the website and how far back it would go. Uh, you would just see the 2011 budget summary. And that would go, you know, this is 2009, it would go back that far. And then every state budget document is on the website as well for those years. What about the action? I'm sorry? What about that? What about that? So it's been, you, you mean like detail line items and stuff? Well, yeah. you put budget, but the actual is going to get the budget. Uh, no. We do have the annual audit and the annual financial statement. Uh, master plan broken up into various uh, pieces to do so far. So, um, again, obviously, you know, it's going to take some time to go through page by page, but I wanted to try and give you the highlights so you can see the work we've done. Um, I want to thank all of the department heads because this was not an easy undertaking um, based on what we were looking to do. Um, I think you are going to find this is dramatically better than the previous website we have in terms of functionality and search. So with that, that's the Vernon Township website. Thank you, Jerry. Great job. Real good. Very quickly, I wanted to go over the Vernon Township Municipal Utilities Authority website. It's not nearly as done as the other one, but this is, it's probably 90% finished and we're still waiting on some things. This is what this page looks like. you got the About section that lists all the members. Rates we don't have current yet. We do have the current schedules of meetings and agendas. The same uh, search functionality as the municipal website, you can search within it. It's in PDF. You will have your budgets, audits, and reports as the years go on. Uh, the policies and rules and regulations are all listed in there. You can search on the side. Clicking on it, it'll automatically go down. You know, whatever you click on. So that is the MUA website again. And you know, thanks to the MUA. Uh, John Erickson for his assistance in getting us this information and I UK and all the uh, secondary for the NUA board as well. So this is the Vernon Township NUA website done by the same webmaster in the same amount of time. Great job, Jerry. Well, Thanks. It looks great. Thank you, Jerry. And that concludes the mayor's report for this evening, gentlemen. Thank you very much. This time I have a proclamation to read. Whereas the citizens of Vernon Township stand firmly committed to promoting reading as a catalyst for our students, future academic success, their preparation for American, America's jobs of the future, and their ability to compete in the global economy. And whereas the Vernon Township Board of Education has provided significant leadership in the area of, the, of community involvement in the education of our youth, Grounded in the principle that educational investment is the key to communities' well-being and long-term quality of life, 
and whereof, whereas the NEA's Read Across America, a national celebration of reading, will be conducted on March 2nd, 2012, which would have been the 108th birthday of Theodore Seuss Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss. And whereas Read Across America, New Jersey, is being conducted statewide by the New Jersey Education Association, in partnership with the New Jersey State League of Municipalities, the New Jersey Library Association, and their local affiliates across the state to promote reading and adult involvement in the education of our community students. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Township of Vernon calls on the citizens of Vernon Township to ensure that every child is in a safe place reading together with a caring adult on March 2nd, 2012. And be it further resolved that this body enthusiastically endorses the NEA's Read Across America and Read Across America New Jersey and recommits our community to engage in programs and activities to make American children the best readers in the world. Proclamation to the mayor for his signature and post it. So moved. All second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, items for action. We have the uh, executive session minutes. Uh, motion, please. Moved. Motion by Councilmember Zuno, second. Second. Second by Councilmember Kadish. Please call the roll. Councilmember Dunn. Yes. Councilmember Cady. Yes. Councilmember Rizzuto. Yes. Councilmember Weston. Yes. Council President Lane. Yes. Regular session minutes, 7 12, 2011. Motion? Motion. Motion by Councilmember Dunn, second. Second. Second by Councilmember Kadish. Please call the roll. Councilmember Dunn. Yes. Councilmember Cady. Yes. Councilmember Rizzuto? Yes. Councilmember Wetzel? Yes. Council President Lynch? Yes. Reorganization meeting minutes, January 3rd, I'm sorry, regular session minutes, December 27th, 2011. Motion, please. Thank you. Motion by Councilmember Rizzuto, second? Second. Second by Councilmember Kadish. Please roll roll. Councilmember Dunn? Yes. Councilmember Kadish? Yes. Councilmember Rizzuto? Yes. Councilmember Wetzel? Yes. Yes. The organization minutes, uh, meeting minutes, January 3rd, 2012. Motion, please. I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Wetzel, uh, Wetzel, second by Mr. Dunn. Please call the roll. Council Member Dunn? Yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. Council President Lynch? Yes. Regular session minutes, January 9th, 2012. <coughs> Motion, please. I'll make it. Motion made by Councilmember Rizzuto. Second. By Council President Lynch. Please call the roll. Councilmember Dunn? Yes. Councilmember Page? Yes. Councilmember Rizzuto? Yes. Councilmember Wetzel? Yes. Council President Lynch? Yes. Okay, on the agenda, uh, the uh, resolutions. Resolution 12-20 is the payment of recurring bills. Resolution 12-21, authorizing and directing the reinstatement of installment payments for the Pleasant Valley Lake Dam Assessment on Block 268-22, Lot 6, pursuant to NJSA 47-56-35B. A resident is asked to be reinstated to the payment plan after defaulting on the payments due to financial hardship. The resident is behind for 2011, which is resulting in the entire balance being due, less than $2,000 total. By being reinstated, the payment plan drops the payments to $225 each. Am I correct on that? Okay. Resolution 12-22 is a tax court judgment for 2011 taxes, uh, the tax appeal for Mountain Creek property, <coughs> 1223 is a tax court judgment for 
2010 taxes, this appeal resulted in a tax court judgment on 10 properties in 2010. 1224 is tax court judgments on 2009 taxes. This tax appeal resulted in a tax court judgment on the same 10 plus one more for 2009 taxes. Uh, 1225 is approving an active volunteer fireman for membership in the New Jersey State Firemen's Association. This is an existing member of the Pochuck Valley Fire Department who is applying for membership in the New Jersey State Firemen's Association. Resolution 12-26 is a, a fund balance transfer. Uh, it's an anticipated shortage for Social Security and radio, communica radio communication. Salaries will be covered from an excess in the land use salaries line item. Okay, resolution 12-27, awarding a contract to an on-site apparatus services incorporated to repair apparatus on the Vernon Fire Department tank 403 and to perform additional repair service on township fire apparatus during 2012. This replaces prior service, uh, uh, it, this replaces a prior service provider to eliminate the travel time charges that have been applied for all, each and every call that they was made to them. Sorry, I couldn't read my own writing. At $127 each time that they were called. Resolution 12-28 is authorizing an emergency contract with Earth Tech Associates Incorporated for repairing roads and property that was damaged by Hurricane Irene. Earth Tech was used to repair damage from a hurricane as an emergency situation, as an emergency situation affecting public health and safety. This is funded by emergency bonding in September. In September, this resolution was 11-177. Um, resolution 1229. This is the uh, resolution that's authorizing fireworks to be displayed. On February 6, 2012, within the Township of Vernon to celebrate the 2012 Special Olympics, Fire Marshal has indicated he has no objection. Resolution 12-30, authorizing the agreement to extend the contract to acquire real property between the Township of Vernon and Main Street Associates Incorporated for an additional 180 days. This is the seventh extension of this MSA agreement. Resolution 12-31. Authorizing a renewal contract for 2012 recording secretary for the Environmental Commission in the amount not to exceed $1,500. This will be at a reappointment of the existing recording secretary, Aida Cato. Cato. Resolution 12-32. Authorizing the renewal contract for 2012 recording secretary for the Historic Preservation Commission and Land Use Board in the amount not to exceed $2,500. This will be the reappointment of the existing recording secretary for both entities, which is Cynthia Davis. Resolution 12-33, authorizing the award of a contract for professional training services for the employees of the Township of Vernon. These training seminars on cultural sensitivity in the workplace are for all the employees in Vernon Township. Okay. Are there any questions on any of the ordinances? Uh, I'm sorry, resolutions. <coughs> I need to remove 12-25 uh, and 12-27 from the consent agenda, please. You'll get no other, comments. no other comments or questions? I just have perhaps a clarification on 1230, which is the extension of the, um, the resolution extending um, um, Main Street Associates. When we talked about this, according to my notes, uh, briefly on December 27, there was a thought to include in this extension uh, uh, or as part of the process anyway, uh, an authorization to proceed with an appraisal. Mm -hmm. Everybody. So 
everybody has a, a subject everybody's rights to use it. Then I can go down there. Sure. I can go down there and dig it up. As well, as you didn't do anything to bother anybody else in particular. Now, this is also in connection with um, an application that was approved by the Township Land Use Board and one for an inherently beneficial use and the solar... Uh, um, uh, wait a minute. That's an opinion. Now, what? That's an opinion. No, not, not of mine. Well, I know, but it's an opinion of the Land Use Board and I may not agree with them either. Well, which is an opinion? <laughs> uh, that it's an inherently beneficial... No, use. that's the state statute, NJSA uh, 4055D-4. Uh, for solar power? Yes. Uh, was that the one that hands out the grants for solar power? No. Yeah. That's the one that's probably attached to that statute. No, it's somewhere else. It's in the tax. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. So which, you, which you know better than me, so. No, no, no. You know better than I do. I mean, you can you can talk rings around. Uh, yeah. Be nice, so, though. Uh, so anyhow. So there is no fee. There is no fee. Bottom line, there's no fee. You're correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, there's a question. The ordinance states that there's a fee. The administration <laughs> fee, if I remember correctly, up in front of me, that talks about fee.
subject to existing usage and such rights that utilities may have to locate transmission facilities um, and uh, all the other obligations that are set forth in Section 1 ABC and uh, which includes paying for this yeah, ordinance. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but um, there are a lot of things there already. And they can't be. That's why we came down to non exclusive co, -lo co location. Because it's the only thing. We, we, we really, to those that think we're giving a lot here, we're, 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 there's a lot there and we're letting him be there too. Um, him or, or the business be there too. Now, the question I asked when Bruce first brought this forward, I don't think it's been answered. Doesn't this open up the right for anybody in the township to ask for the same thing? Oh yeah, anybody. So sets a precedent. A precedent. No, nothing sets a precedent. But but the um, but anybody can ask for for the uh, a right to do something in, in a public sure right way. Sure. And then if if it was doable, we'd have to look at it the same way we looked at this. Can we do it? Is it possible? What's there? My concern is, who is the overseer? We are. You. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I'm not a technologist. I don't know much about voltage and. Okay. When high when high voltage gets <coughs> transmitted, I know it has some health things. You want to test? Who? Bruce. The owner. Hold harmless part in here. Not only that, but it's clearly stated in here that the owner shall reimburse the township for costs and fees of engineering. Legal and other reviews of the plants. So, I mean, your, your oversight is but, within that. And it's also old harmless spruce. Yeah. Have you had an engineer attached to the safety of this particular? There is an engineer attached to the project as well as this has to be done under the supervision of the township engineer, right. as the whole project will be. And at what point is, are those reports given to the land use board? I would imagine you will report directly to the land use board. I don't. I don't really know what the procedure is when a township uh, engineer inspects a particular job. If he does report directly back, I think he might report back if there's a, an issue, if there's violation of the of the land use approval. Yeah, it doesn't come to us in due course. No, it's a land use board matter. Well, after, after this, no, it's my understanding that. This solar panels are going to be augmenting the power needed for your commercial establishment. Correct. Number one. Then you have a, an agreement with the power company that you would get paid surplus for anything that is this, over what you need. This particular type of installation does not get paid surplus. It is strictly for the for the use of the business. If there's excess power generated, it. It goes back into the grid as a credit that comes back to be used by the business. And this is not something that's being done by some solar company. It's being done by you privately. Correct. Any other questions? Okay. Please call the roll. Councilmember Dunn. Yes. Councilmember Case. Yes. Councilmember Duda. Yes. Councilmember Westfield. Yes. Council President Lynch. Yes. Okay, now we have the second reading of the Ordinance 12-1. This ordinance is to provide and determine the range of compensation for specified offices and employees in the Township of Vernon. Can I have a motion? So motion made by Council Member Rizzuto. Can I have a second? I'll second. Second by Council Member Wetzel. Okay, now that that's been done. Oops, I'm sorry. Do you want to? Can I have a uh, public comment? Anyone want to speak? Right, and before we do that, I'd just like to make it clear for the record that um, according to my notes, um, we had 10 people um, 
present their positions um, as much as they wanted to uh, earlier this evening at the uh, public session. I'd like the record to be clear that all of uh, those presentations are part of this record in, with respect to the adoption of this ordinance without having to repeat those, as is uh, some information presented by the mayor and by, um, by Jerry Gimes um, when asked a question as well. So that that is the totality of the record here. And, and again, you need not get up and say it again to make sure it's part of the public record with respect to this ordinance. The one, very clear, the, uh, Mr. Oliver, I had asked him to right. wait until this portion of the meeting to ask questions if he wanted to. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. <coughs> Sorry, I... Um, Thank you for being patient. No um, well, let me first state that, uh, uh, personally, I believe the council's worth every penny of the increase. I really do. But I don't think it's the right time for the state yet. I, that's just my personal opinion. Um, similarly, with the mayor, I think he's worth every penny of $50,000. If he's a full-time mayor, good for him. Um, and I've always stated, and I'll state again to the record, that uh, um, I think that Joe Giants is an asset to this town. I think he's a huge asset. And coming back to what I was discussing, what we had said that there were ranges established, and I was trying to get to how those ranges were established and what the consideration was taken as to the existing payroll of the people involved, or whether you establish those ranges by looking at jobs and then um, going outside and establishing what those ranges should be. Thank you. It was a little of both. Um, what I did was I took all of the salaries that are mentioned in the salary ordinance. You know, based on what they are now, where they were in the past, and when the last time they received increases were, I went through a detailed analysis of salaries in more Sussex, Warren, and Passaic County for similar positions in towns with similar sized communities. Came up with a range, you know, that way. Um, it's important to note that you know the council knows this, but you know, just because salary has a range doesn't doesn't mean that person's going to get an increase up to that range. You know, I, I know you do. Um, because we talked about it, but I just, you know, I think that's important to know that if you know if you see a salary range from you know this number to that number, it just it gives the administration the authority to give a raise within that, you know, uh, within that number. But by no means does it mean that anybody's getting a raise. And I can just simply tell you, it's just not accurate that anybody will get a raise to the top based on the salary increase. It's there for a couple of years while the current administration is in place, and it can always be changed at any time in the future. Okay, then that was going to be my next question, actually. How long is this range going to be in effect for? Um, you going to modify it every year? Is that the intent? The salary ordinance should be reviewed every year. So you would, generally speaking, increase it by a level of inflation every year? That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be increased. Um, it just means it's going to be reviewed. I, I would never say it's going to automatically be increased as a policy decision. Now, if anybody is currently outside that, Say they're lower than that range or above that range, can you can do that? Uh, nobody is at this time. Everybody Inside everybody is within that range. And that's what we use as a starting point. Certainly, you know, you take into effect if somebody were to leave the township, you know, making a certain amount of money, you know, the council, you know, you judge that next person for that position and decide, you know what, should we introduce an ordinance to lower that range? If we go well, that range side. Uh, and that's what I would assume well, I any good administration would do. That I suppose is my main um Comment, it's a beep, it's not. Comment, but as regards this, if in fact you have a range for somebody, you should be having a range for a job. And to take your job rather than pick anybody else, I've got a range at the moment of 100, 115,000, which in essence I have no problem with. But if, if for take an example, you just haven't paid 115,000, I wouldn't have expected that 115,000 to be taken into account in establishing that range. And secondly, I would have expected the council then to look at your pay or anybody's pay that falls into that sort of criteria and then say, well, we won't give you an increase. The mayor will decide to give you a lump sum and not increase that salary. And that was how I would have expected the ranges to be made up. That's, that's accurate. I mean, and I can tell you, you know, normally wouldn't comment on my circumstance, but I can, that's a range based on salaries within the region. Well, I'm not going to be making $115,000 a 
think on you because I, I find your non controversial um, maybe it's controversial to some of the other people, but it's not controversial to me. Um, no, I didn't want to pick on anybody. That's fine. Um, Mr. Oliver, if I can interrupt for just a second. Sure. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'm reasonably sure that uh, the idea of a lump sum payment to public employees is not allowed under the local finance regulations. I will check it to be sure that uh, what I'm saying is correct, but it is my impression that that is not an acceptable practice for municipal employees. Under the really? Law. Yes. It the commercial world all the time. Absolutely does. I have a question about it. Now, I didn't no, say it wasn't yeah. good management. I said I, I don't believe it's allowed. I will verify it and I will bring it back at the next meeting to be sure. That it's a matter of public Thank record. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Mayor, I would think it might be because of the fact that when I worked as an employee, when they do a contract and it's retroactive, you get paid all the tax back pay. So. I think two different things here. Okay. Um, as to the rent, I'm I'm against the 1201. I think you all know that because of the, the economy and the situation. I think that possibly these things are, are valid, but now, no. Uh, the range is exactly the same thing. It's like, why would we be giving ranges if we're not going to expect to do something? The people are already there, just keep it there. There's no need to do the ranges right now. Um, as far as the salaries of other towns and or communities, salaries have been escalating over the years in an economy that was growing like crazy. And during the governor's uh, state address, he mentioned the fact that we have to bring things back into reality. So when we keep escalating to match others, and then others escalate to match us, we just keep the cycle going. We need to break the cycle. And now, in this condition, in our economy, with people suffering the way they are, we should not be putting ourselves in a position where we could be giving these raises. As far as working hard or working phenomenal hours, I've done that. A lot of other people have done that that have been in the corporate world. Not only did we not get raises, we took pay cuts, 10% pay cut for over five years.
Ryan, what's taken place since I've become the mayor has been to address Irene and the potential to buy the United Water Sewerage System, which we haven't, in fact, taken the money down. That's the only money that's been borrowed by this government. Why are we able to do what we're able to do? There's some very simple reasons. We've recovered the $900,000 that was laid out in taxpayers' dollars to the SCNUA through the financial planning. We, in fact, have seen a budget um, surplus that will be added somewhere between six and 800000 from the 2010 budget. What does that mean? It means that that budget, uh, in fact, raised taxes on the people in Vernon when it wasn't necessary, which is exactly what happened for 10 years under the Management Council form of government. So why does that money not apply back to the taxpayers? It is being applied back to the taxpayers. If, in fact, this budget were not to be uh, presented as it has been, if, in fact, we simply brought in the exact dollar-for-dollar dollar budget, which is what we have done, your taxes would go up by about six cents because of the loss of asset value or assessed value of real estate in this township. We are using part of that surplus that we have recovered to keep the tax rate level and, in fact, reestablish and refurbish that, that surplus as we go into 2013 and 14 and 15 so that people can look at their municipal taxes and know that they will be stable, that they will not be that jigsaw pattern that we've seen only for the last 10 years or so it's been straight up in the air. I believe we have used the best financial planning available to us. I believe that you will see when you receive your bill that the municipal tax for Burning Township to run and to deliver all of the services that we are required to and all of the mandates that are unfunded by the state yet mandated. I've heard people talking about the governor. I have great respect for Governor Christie, but let's see whether or not he delivers a budget that's not one dollar higher. Let's see whether or not the rhetoric that comes out of Trenton becomes action. Because, in fact, here's what it comes down to. Here's what it comes down to, and I want to repeat this to you and to everyone. I am just as sensitive as everyone is to the plight of the people in this township. When I campaigned, every person I talked to, or at least nine out of ten, said, Vic, what are you going to do about property taxes? And I said, there's not going to be an increase, and there won't be. And it hasn't come from borrowing money. It's come from good management and a commitment on the part of our department heads to make the best decisions. When this council took office on July 1st, the budget was 57% spent at the halfway mark. Let me say that again. At the halfway mark, it was 57% spent. We finished the year at 95% spent. I didn't do that. The department heads and the employees of this township did it by watching the dollars, by being careful how they spend them, and by not wasting money. That's how it happened. For people to come forward tonight and to be against giving those people a meager raise, okay, despite whatever you may think, I think flies in the face of people who have done a good job. Because if you're going to ask them to keep your taxes down, if you're going to ask them to do the things that they did, someone needs to recognize that. Yes, I agree with you. It needs to be recognized. It doesn't have to be done in the pocketbook. In private industry, across this country, even in Europe, people are taking a hard hit in salaries. They have either their salaries frozen or they're taking a reduction in salary, just like Gary said, 10%, 15%, and they have increased responsibilities. I think if there's any money extra that you have found, and I give you credit for finding all this money and, and good management, that should go back to the taxpayers and reducing their taxes. Not just keeping it at the same rate, which is high in itself, but to reduce it. I think in this economy, to take a raise, anybody taking a raise, and not taking a reduction, never mind never a raise, but taking a reduction, is insulting to all the taxpayers in this township that, have, that, that are struggling to make ends meet, I grant you could spend a lot of time in... ...presently is an alternative member of the Environmental Commission to a full term ending 12-31-13 to replace the resignation that we received. Motion? By Council Member...
Done. Second. By Council Member Wetzel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you opposed? The last, the last nomination that I would like to make is Mr. James Kensick as order number two to the Vernon Municipal Utility Authority. His term would end on February 1st of 2015. I would like to make that motion. I would like to second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Jim, will you please stand up and be recognized? Jim, thank you for serving. Councilman Ed Dunn as, uh, as my uh, uh, designate to uh, head the Economic Development Advisory Committee and to thank him for his efforts in the past six months and keep up the good work. We're making good progress. I'll make that was just a point of order. Sure. I believe uh, that's an ad hoc committee. It's an advisory committee. But it, I believe it's an ad hoc committee. It's not generated by ordinance, is it? No. So that nomination should come from the council. No, actually, the mayor has the is an ex officio member, and if you read the uh, the uh, administrative code, I have the right to designate someone to, in fact, serve in my place. That's an interesting interpretation. Well, we'll leave the interpretation up to the attorney, but that was the interpretation in July. It hasn't changed. But even even as an ex officio, you don't you don't have votes as an ex officio. Hey, do you vote on things at the Economic Development Advisory Committee? Okay, in the future, would you please not do that? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Grab a little. Council, uh, Council Member Dunn, comments? 